Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael in for Fran Stoddard. Today is Bennington Battle Day. It's a memorial holiday unique to Vermont, but even many time, a long time Vermonters might be unclear as to exactly what Bennington Battle Day is all about. Well, think Revolutionary War. It was on August 16th in 1777 that John Stark led a force of militiamen, including the Green Mountain Boys. They would strike a blow for American independence that led to the British surrender at the Battle of Saratoga a few months down the road. To recount the battle and its monumental importance to Vermont and the United States, we join historian Howard Coffin. Vermont's Bennington Battle Monument, a monstrosity, 306 feet high, one of the biggest battle monuments in the world, bigger than anything at Gettysburg or Yorktown. Honoring a battle fought three miles away in New York State, a battle with no more than 3,500 men involved, a mere skirmish by Civil War standards. Dedicated on August 19, 1891, is part of the Vermont Centennial. President Benjamin Harrison spoke here. 30,000 people attended. The crowd included 625 Vermont Civil War veterans. Would they have understood why such a small battle was getting such attention? Of course they would have. They were veterans and they understood that the importance of a battle is not judged by the number of men involved, the number of casualties. It is judged by its strategic importance, by its importance in history. And just possibly, the Battle of Bennington was one of the most important battles in the history of the world. In the early summer of 1777, a British army of about 8,000 men, commanded by John Burgoyne, Gentleman Johnny Burgoyne, invaded the Champlain Valley from Canada. The forces included British regulars, mercenaries, Hessians from Germany, and some Native Americans. Burgoyne rolled up the valley he captured Crown Point. He captured Mount Independence and Ticonderoga. He fought a difficult battle in the hills at Hubberton, Vermont, that was won only after a struggle. But on came Burgoyne to capture Whitehall and Fort Anne and moved south all the way to Fort Edward. But he was getting short of supplies, and he heard that there was a cache of American arms at Bennington. 20 miles away from the Hudson Valley. So he sent a force under Friedrich Baum, consisting mainly of Hessian soldiers, but also some Tories, east 20 miles toward Bennington, not only to capture the arms, but to bring back badly needed horses and food. He needed beef. And so Baum set out in this direction, heading into enemy territory. Baum's march with his 700 men was going well until he came within five miles of Bennington to a point along the Willemsic River. Baum sat down here, wrote a message on the head of a barrel to Burgoyne, send me help. Though the Battle of Bennington is essentially a New York battle, parts of it, the maneuvering, were here in Vermont. We're in Vermont right now at the site of John Stark's campground. Here he was camped with his 1,500 men on the eve of the battle. Here Stark developed his battle plan. It was a complex one, but it worked. The plan was that he would lead the main assault on the enemy center by the river. Also, he would send 200 New Hampshire men under Colonel Moses Nichols on a six-mile march to the north and then bringing them in behind the enemy. 200 men under Colonel Samuel Herrick, mostly Vermonters, 
would swing to the south about six miles and come in behind the enemy, enveloping the enemy position. It was probably here, just before the action began, that Stark made his famous remark, the redcoats are there and they are ours, or Molly Stark sleeps a widow tonight. We're in New York State's Bennington Battlefield Park. We're on this 800-foot hill, the top of which Baum fortified. And he put about 60 of his Hessians into a big earthwork right on top of that hill. The fighting went on here for nearly two hours. John Stark, who had been amidst the fury of the Battle of Bunker Hill, said it was the loudest clap of thunder he ever heard, this fight for the hilltop. In the end, the Americans overran this position. There was hand-to-hand -hand fighting within the fortification. Those Hessians that remained alive ran down the hill to get away. Most of them were shot or captured. While Herrick and Nichols battled high on the hill, Stark attacked bombs positions down along the river. This modern bridge is on the site of the 1870s bridge that carried the Bennington Road across the Willumsek River. This is as close as von Baum ever got to Bennington. Facing obviously heavy opposition, he dug in here along the river, creating breastworks on this side, and on the far side he fortified a couple of cabins. But beyond that, there's a hill on the far side of the river that he also felt he had to fortify because it overlooks this position, and this position might have been untenable if he couldn't hold that hill. So up here on the hill, he put 200 local loyalists, Tories, and they hurriedly threw up an earthwork. And they were defending it, looking to the north, looking to the east, waiting for the approach of Stark's men. The fighting began down below them, and suddenly they heard something behind them, turned around, and there were Americans behind them, and they had to get out of here in a hurry. And they skedaddled down this hill and across the river, many of them getting shot in the fields and then in the river, and then as they tried to climb the steep bank of the Willumsek. This position fell in minutes. By late afternoon of August 16, 1777, the battle appeared to be over, but suddenly reinforcements sent by Burgoyne in answer to Baum's appeal marched onto the field led by Colonel Heinrich Bremen. The sudden arrival of Colonel Bremen's 500 men from the west, the relief force, caught Stark's men completely by surprise, and they were driven back a mile to this ravine where they formed a line of battle and began to fight as best they could, but their line was beginning to give way. Stark's hold on this ravine was indeed becoming tenuous. It looked like all could be lost, and then the Americans heard behind them cheering. Had they been flanked? Were the British behind them? No. It was 500 reinforcements under the Vermonter Seth Warner. 500 Vermonters come to the rescue, and Warner attacked through this ravine across this little brook and drove the British back. The fighting would go on until darkness. We are now back in Vermont. The battle has ended. In a house that stood near this marker, probably on the site of that house, Colonel Baum died. He was put in a cart and brought here on rough roads, protesting all the way that he couldn't stand the pain of the jouncing. But he could only speak German, and his American captors did not know what he was saying. He went into the house, and after long hours of suffering from his stomach wound, 
He died in agony. Here in the old cemetery at North Bennington lie many of the Hessian soldiers who died in the Battle of Bennington. Immediately after the battle, Stark brought some 700 prisoners to old Bennington. In addition, more than 200 of the enemy had been killed, many more wounded. Bomb's force had been decimated and a heavy blow had been struck to the reinforcements under Bremen. When what was left of Bremen's force returned to Burgoyne on the Hudson, Burgoyne congratulated them for some kind of a triumph. He couldn't have believed that. At this time, George Washington was dealing with another British army far to the south. When word finally reached him of Bennington, Washington remarked on the great stroke by Stark near Bennington. A member of his staff, perhaps speaking for the general, wrote, there was a cloud in the north but I really think that matters in that quarter look well just now. I trust Burgoyne will be severely mauled. Less than two months later, Burgoyne would surrender his entire army at Saratoga. It would be, history says, the decisive battle of the American Revolution. Why? Because France, as a result, decided to come into the war on the American side. That would lead to the final surrender at Yorktown. Was Saratoga the decisive battle? Yes, but was that battle's fate decided by the crushing defeat here at Bennington? Perhaps, perhaps. Thank you, Howard. The Bennington Battle Monument is a state historic site. It's open until the end of October, and you can learn more at the website BenningtonBattleMonument.com. That's our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.